So we continue with page number four, the last line, and the last paragraph that we read in the previous lecture. Poor man. It was who is this poor man? Mr. Hamill, the teacher. It was in honor of this last lesson that he had put on his fine Sunday clothes. So he had put on those Sunday clothes because it was his last lesson. And now I understand why the old men of the village were sitting there in the back of the room. The village men were sitting in the back of the room. The reason he could understand now because it was the last lesson, the Germans, German language was to be taught from the next day. It was because they were sorry. They were sorry too that they had not gone to school more. They could not study more and they were feeling sorry for that. It was their way of thanking our master for his 40 years of faithful service and of showing their respect for the country that was theirs no more. Now, the village people had come to the school to express their gratitude, thankfulness to the, the school teacher who had given his services to the, of teaching for 40 years. And they were also showing their respect for their country, which was not theirs anymore. While I was thinking of all this, I heard my name called. It was my turn to recite. What would I not have given to be able to say that dreadful rule for the particles all through, very loud and clear, and without any mistake? I would have given everything possible if I could have been able to memorize that rule for the particles that she was asking and if I had been able to say that rule for the particles very loudly and clearly without any mistake, I would have given all that but unfortunately I had not done anything and I did not know the rule but I got mixed up on the first words and stood there holding on to my desk, my heart beating and not a sense of shame that he had not learned that rule and he was not able to speak that in front of everybody. I heard Mr. Hamill say to me, I won't scold you little friends. You must, fe you must, not fe you must feel bad enough. This is very interesting statement. He says that I won't scold you, little friends. I am not going to scold you. On the last day of the school, on the last day when the teacher is teaching, if you cannot say, then the things are bad enough even otherwise. You must feel bad enough. See how it is. Now the teacher is very, say, mature and can only blame the student. Let's see how it is. This, bah, I have plenty of time. I'll do it. I'll learn it tomorrow. And now you see where, where you ah, That is the great trouble. Where people of else's, they think that there is a lot of time, we'll do it some other day and now the time has come when it is the last lesson. She puts off, yes, El else's is uh, considered to be she, she puts off learning till tomorrow. Now those fellows out there will have the right to say to you, those fellows out there are the Persian soldiers who are going to take over Elsa's under their position and rule it. Those people out there will say to you, how is it 
you pretend to be Frenchmen, and yet you can neither speak nor write your own language. Now the people, the Prussians will say that you claim that you pretend, you show off that you are Frenchmen and you cannot speak your own language or write your own language. But you are not the worst, poor little friends. A great deal to reproach ourselves, ourselves with. We have a great deal to reproach ourselves. You all feel sorry that you have committed a mistake. Reproach means to blame. Your parents were not anxious enough to have you learn. Their parents did not take much interest in your learning. You preferred to put to put you to work on a farm or at the mills so as to have a little more money. So the child did not study. Of course it is his fault. But the time has passed and it is the last lesson. And your memory that people claim that you are all Frenchmen and you don't know to speak. The parents are also to be blamed because they were not at all anxious, worried about the children study, studying at school. Instead of that, they preferred to put the children to work so that they would get a little more money. And I, the teacher, I have been to blame also. Have I not often sent you to water my plants, water my plants instead of learning your instead of learning your lessons. Go fishing. Did I not just give you a holiday? So the teacher is also to blame. Everybody is to blame. Then from one of one thing to another. Mr. Hamel went on to talk of the French language, saying that it was the most beautiful. This is the map, and you can see Elsis and Lorien Air. And these are the places which were six which were under the Prussian rule. French language is the most beautiful language in the world. The clearest, the most logical that we must guard it among us and never forget it. We must protect our language. We must not forget our language. Because when people are enslaved, as long as they hold fast to the language, they had the key to their prison. They had the key to their prison means they had the key to get out of the prison. Then he opened a grammar and read us our lessons. I was amazed to see how well I understood it. All he said seemed so easy, so easy. I think too that I had never listened so carefully and that he had never explained everything with so much patience. Now here both the things come here. The teacher, he was also was teaching well. The student also knew that it was the last lesson that he was attending. So he was also very attentive. I had never listened so carefully and that he had never explained everything with so much patience. It seemed almost as if the poor man wanted to give us all he knew before going away and to put it all into our heads at one stroke. And once, once and for all, he wanted to teach everything that he knew so that the students would maintain that heritage because it was going to become their past forever. After the grammar, we had a lesson in writing. That day, Mr. Hamel 
had new copies for us, written in a beautiful round hand. France, Elsis, France, Elsis. They looked like little flags floating everywhere in the school. Hung from the rod at the top of our desk. So the, everywhere these things were put like floating flags. Flags that were floating everywhere. What was written on those things? France, Elsis, France, Elsis. You ought to have seen how everyone set to work. Now, to make those flags, they were set to work. And how quiet it was. Everybody was working very quietly, making those flags with round handwriting. And you ought to have seen how everyone, everyone set to work and how quiet it was. The only sound was the sky scratching of the pens over the paper. While they were writing, they were scratching the pens on the paper and that was the only sound that could be heard. Once some beetles flew in, now you can imagine what beetles fly in. So that must have been the situation. So, once some beetles flew in, but nobody paid any attention to them, not even the littlest one. The smallest child also did not look at the beetles. That was, Fran that was French too. Now, what were the little ones doing? They were tracing the fish hooks and they were so much They were also something of their own nation, of France. On the roof, the pigeons cooed very low. And I thought to myself, will they make them sing in German? Even the pigeons? Whenever I looked up from my writing, I saw Mr. Hamill sitting motionless in his chair. And he burst at one thing, then at another as if he wanted to fix in his mind just how everything looked in that little school room. Everything, how it was in that room, Mr. Hamel. Whenever, say, he looked up at Mr. Hamel, what was he doing? He was sitting motionless, looking at everything in the classroom, and he wanted to take the memory in his mind from there forever because that was his last lesson. Fancy. For 40 years he had been in a place with outside the window and in front of just imagine that for 40 years that it had been so. Just like that, just as it was, no changes. For 40 years everything had been just as it was. And Only the desks had been worn smooth. From the in the beginning, the benches were but as they were used often, they were worn out and smooth. The walnut tree in the garden were taller. That was one other difference. And the hop vine that he had planted of the roof. How it must have broken his heart to hear poor man. To hear his sister moving about in the room, packing their trunks. Trunks are those big metal bags in which, which are used for transporting things. For they must have leave the country next day. Now, his sister lived upstairs or they lived upstairs and his sister was, say, packing up things how he must be feeling. But he had the courage to hear every lesson to the very writing he had had in history. And then the babies chanted their ba, be, bi, bu, bo down there 
at the back of their room, old Hauser had put on his spectacles and, holding his hair in both hands, spelled the letters with them. With the small kid, we could see that he too was crying. His voice trembled with emotion. That is about Mr. Hauser, who was sitting at the back of the class. He was also in tears. His voice trembled. His voice was shivering with emotion. And it was so funny to hear him that we all wanted to laugh and cry. On one side, we wanted to laugh because it was funny. Mr. Hauser was emotional. His voice was trembling. And he was chanting with the babies, ba -be but at the same time we were feeling sorry for him and we wanted to cry. Ah, how well I remember it, that last lesson. At once the church clock struck 12 and the angelus at the same moment, the trumpets of the Prussians returning from drill sounded under our window. Mr. Hamel stood up. I never saw him look so tall. So at last, say it was 12 o'clock. It was time to close everything. And what were the other things that, they, that happened simultaneously that are mentioned over here? My friend said I. Said he, I, I. But something choked him. He could not go on. He could not speak. Then he turned to the blackboard took a piece of chalk, bearing on with all his might, all his strength. He wrote as, as, as La France. Then he stopped and learned his head, his head against the wall. And without a word, he made a gesture to us with his hand. School be dismissed. You may go. Now, <laughs> for understanding the text, some questions are given. You may go through that. We'll discuss that in the next session. Thank you.